first issue we have filed earlier this week a new Brady motion I have spoken though briefly with Miss Drain Burdick about that so she was going to find out if they have any response to it as far as I know let me know and we can do that I do want to for you though I do want to renew the motion that we previously filed and you denied requesting a copy of the grand jury testimony of George Anthony uh, as I recall you did not deny it with prejudice you denied it uh, waiting to see if there'd be a sufficient pressure. Well, Mr. Anthony has testified, and he's testified twice so far in three days of trial. And uh, I believe that based on the impeachments that have occurred, or that I view as impeachments, I'd ask the court to reconsider that, making available to both sides. The grand jury testimony. Of course, it comes as no surprise to the prosecution because they were there. And we've not been able allowed to see what his prior sworn testimony was to the grand jury. So based on the motion previously filed, I'm renewing that and requesting that you uh, make it available to us. Um, it might, it would not be perhaps most professional to argue this next case without the state having seen the case that we just got produced this afternoon so we'll bring it up another time i have argued to you at sidebar and with the objections done that all of this line of questioning of all these series of friends about casey's failure to be upset or anything wrong and so forth is another word for showing remorse as a matter of law it's not proper i can tell you that uh, you you also recognize as quite persuasive brother Eaton's uh, judge Eaton retired uh, teaching book on capital conducting capital crimes page 127 and 128 I can refer you to it's very clear judge that that uh, it is improper to argue absence of remorse and I know you know that of course in the penalty yes. phase but so I was curious well wait a minute it's no more right in the guilt phase. And the case law that I just produced says that as far as the Supreme Court case of Randolph versus State. We can argue that tomorrow morning if you prefer. I, I realize I just gave it to them, um, and I don't need to play that way. The fact of the matter is that all of these questions from all of these friends going into whether she was happy or unhappy or how she looked and no changes and so forth, uh, repeated objections and overruled. I think that it's improper and uh, give a chance to review on that. And I will be moving for a mistrial on the cumulative effect of all of those. So that's all I can say at this time. State prepared to argue that now. They want to wait. To you know, we can argue it now. Um, having listened to the last part, I, what was the first motion again? I'm not as old as you, but I'm getting it. It, let's take the lack of remorse argument based the lack upon of remorse the Randolph argument. case. The, um, the case that I've been handed, at least based upon the uh, summary, appears to indicate that the holding is that references to um, defendant's remorse, uh, let's see, it says neither the juror's reference to brutal murder nor the prosecutor's guilt face question about defendant's remorse necessitated a mistrial. It would seem to indicate that that is not grounds for mistrial. I, again, I haven't just read the head notes. I would comment, however, that the uh, evidence in this case is relevant to establish, to rebut the defendant's uh, initial uh, phase one claim um, or claim one that the, uh, which will come up in this case at a later time, that the uh, victim in this case was uh, kidnapped or taken from her against her will, um, both the first version and the second version. It is also relevant to rebut the defendant's sort of 3.0 version, which uh, the, the uh, I should say the defense counsel's version, um, that this child died uh, by accident. Clearly, the uh, evidence of the defendant's demeanor um, after this uh, period of time and the day after and for 31 days after that are certainly relevant to establish and rebut the fact that this child died as a result 
of an accidental drowning. The actions are completely and entirely inconsistent with that um, and are relevant to show that inconsistency, but the jury can uh, find. And I believe that it's not showing lack of remorse. Um, it may indicate lack of remorse as an aside, but its relevance is to show, to rebut the defendant's claims about, the various claims about what happened to her daughter. Yeah, I but and they should have saved it for a rebuttal case, not their case in chief. They've argued repeatedly there's a state of mind exception or a consciousness of guilt, and that's wrong. Because the charges here, counts one, two, and three, deal with an allegation of crime committed upon the death of the child. Actions thereafter are not relevant unless they are subject to no other interpretation. We filed a memo on that. The, the, the bottom line is, uh, if there was evidence of flight, we've come in. We know that. In fact, you get a flight instruction. If there's evidence of destruction of evidence as to guilt, that'd be admissible. Failure to respond in what someone else says is the normal way to be expected is not properly admissible as to state of mind, consciousness of guilt, and therefore it's not admissible. And now in addition to that, as counsel acknowledges, it could well be Dealing with remorse, it violates the rule in Randolph versus, and for the record, that's Florida Supreme Court, dated May 3rd, 1990, found at 562 Southern 2nd, 331. The particular references on that subject matter of that case are uh, um, at uh, page seven and eight of a copy that I provide the court. Well, well, let me ask the state a very pointed question. Is the evidence being offered to show a lack of remorse? No, sir. Well, if it is, then it's not admissible and we got a problem. It is not. Well, I'm just asking you since you sure. made that statement. It may indicate a lack of remorse as an aside. Correct. It, it, it could. That's not the reason it's being offered whether someone would interpret it as showing lack of remorse is, is up to them, but that's not the reason it's being offered. Well. And of course, won't be argued. Thank you. Anything else, folks? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the case is quite clear, you can't offer evidence of lack of remorse. I have not taken that to be lack of remorse. It shows her conduct, uh, how she acted after these uh, so-called uh, tragic events. Uh, even though opening statements is just what it is, opening statements and not evidence, the defense has laid out the proposition of the theory of defense uh, that uh, Mr. The victim in this case may have drowned and then the body was disposed of by uh, Mr. Anthony allegedly, although we haven't gotten any proof of that at this stage, uh, but it is relevant to show her conduct and the jury can draw from it, but uh, it is not admissible to show lack of remorse, so the court will stand behind its previous rulings. All right, anything else that you want to talk about now? Uh, you want to deal with the grand jury testimony? Yes, sir, I'm, that was the other issue that I was. Now you want to deal with that in the morning? Your Honor, um, we can deal with it now. Um, I believe that the proper procedure at this point would be for the court to review the grand jury testimony to make a determination in camera whether um, there is anything exculpatory or impeaching. And I believe that's what the court can do. Okay. Then I will uh, ask the clerk to find out which court reporter took down the grand jury testimony of Mr. Anthony transmit that uh, to uh, the court reporting supervisor and they are to prepare me a in-camera transcript that will de be delivered to me 
of Mr. Anthony's grand jury testimony, and I will review his testimony. We already have a transcript. You do? And we will provide it to you. Yes, we had some years ago requested a transcript to review for possible <clears throat> for that purpose. I don't remember. We'll provide it to you. Bring it tomorrow. Then bring it to me tomorrow. Yeah. We, we do have a, a motion in limine. We, we were going to file it in writing tomorrow morning. Um, it has to do with an in limine basically asking the court to require the defendant to proffer any questions they're going to ask of any witness that seek to elicit uh, hearsay statements of the defendant. We, so we don't have questions, objections, and um, so, but we can either, we were going to file it in writing, but uh, the defense wants to deal with it now, we deal with it now. You want to deal with it now? You want to deal with it in the morning at uh, 8.30? Turn your speak on, please. This is a motion in limine in the middle of trial. I, I don't know if, I'm certain it's past your deadline. Sorry, it's based on certain conduct of counsel. We'll, we'll be happy to put it in writing and make it clear and concise, but it's based upon what's going on in the trial. By your motion, I'll determine whether it's timely or untimely, and we'll go from there. Yes, sir. Now, let me hear uh, the defense's position and the state's position about working Monday, uh, Orange County government, as far as the building is concerned, has cleared it in, in terms of opening the building and the costs associated with that. There is a another major issue in terms of a budgetary problem for the sheriff's department, though, in terms of union contracts and uh, overtime that will affect their budget dollars that I'm taking in consideration. And I need to know uh, what the defense's position is and then, or the state, I have a one who wants to go first. This old veteran doesn't want to work on Monday. For 47 years, since I came back from the Far East, I celebrated every year. I don't want to say I'm old, Your Honor. I, but, not, you don't, I know what you're going to say. State? We're trying to determine whether or not we can get witnesses. I expect that the testimony next week will involve many of the law enforcement officers with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Right now, we don't have answers as to their availability. I don't think that there would be a problem, but there's always a possibility that people have made plans for the holiday. Well, most people have made plans for uh, the holidays. Uh, the original schedule that I had given you was a schedule that you would be off uh, on Memorial Day, but you would be working Saturday from nine to one. Uh, at this point in time, I really don't see a compelling reason uh, to work on uh, Monday. But what I will be asking for at the close of business uh, next week, Friday, but not Saturday, since you will be working Saturday, is I gonna ask you in, in terms of your best guesstimate at that time, when do you think you'll be wrapping up? Okay, anything else we need to take up? Uh, Put your speak on. There's only some, uh, I, I think there's some orders that we've been waiting to be signed with UJA. 
Well, and, uh, she's been out the for essence. the last two days because of certain family issues. Uh, I asked Miss Sims to bring me those things today. I so if you have them, I will I, first thing in the morning, Judge. bring them in the morning and I take a look at them. The only one that I have seen that's on my desk, like I've been in my office all day, but I haven't, uh, was a motion for transcription. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have it all first thing in the morning. Now, I did sign an order giving you an additional 100 hours. You had requested 200, but I cut it down to 100 for additional investigative hours. I signed that. Is there anything else? Besides uh, those two? Just JAC stuff. That's really the whole thing. Uh, like yes. what? Transcripts. And Dr. Crop. Bring me the thing on Dr. Crop. The only thing I'm going to say about Dr. Crop, let me look at it. And as long as there are JAC rates and he's not asking anything outrageous and is consistent with JAC rates, I don't see any problem, but I just need to see it. Yes, sir. Anything else, folks? Nothing further. Okay, we'll be in recess. Are you going to take up the motion and limit it tomorrow at 8.30? Then we'll be in recess to 8.30 tomorrow morning. If I have it finished this evening, I will email it to Mr. Baez. If not... I'll have it first thing in the morning. That's why we told them what the subject matter was going to be. Well, you need you need to. It, it's no big secret. We've been talking about it often on the entire day. Uh, Mr. Lazaro disappeared, or we never got him to profit. You need to make sure he comes back tomorrow so he can profit his testimony sometime tomorrow. Let me ask you this question, Mr. Baez. How long do you think the proffer will take since it's just going to be a proffer for purposes of the record? 30 seconds, Judge. Really brief. Okay. Well, you want to do it now or you want to do it in the morning? We can do it now. I don't, I don't expect it to take long. Okay, let's bring him in. Now, to the press. The defense has indicated uh, that they don't want to do any interviews. And they claim that some people are hounding them about interviews. Uh, I have no authority over you on public property. Uh, but we have designated interview zones if folks want to participate in interview zones. Uh, please try to respect their right not to give interviews if they don't want to, but as I told the defense, uh, when you're on public property, you're on public property, and uh, I have no control over the sidewalks of the city of Orlando, just the courthouse proper. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, Mr. Lazario is here. Mr. Lazario is still under oath. Mr. Baez, you may go ahead and proffer the testimony uh, that you uh, wanted to give. You may proceed, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Lazaro. Afternoon. I want to ask you a question in reference to the shared secrets that we had discussed earlier. Sure with your prior testimony was the secret that Casey had shared with you that she had been abused by her father? No. What was the secret that she had shared with you? Lee Anthony tried to sexually abuse her. Okay. And did you, Did she ever discuss in reference to, well, let me ask you this. What was your response to Lee Anthony 
trying to touch her. Shocked. What did you do or what did you say to her? Uh, I don't remember. It's definitely comforting though. And did you kind of brush off the conversation? I, if anything, I probably tried to, to quickly change the subject to, so she wouldn't be dwelling on it. And that's I can't remember the, the exact how it happened, but I do recall her mentioning it. And from my personality, knowing myself, that's what I would be doing, trying to change the subject to get her mind off of it. And is that part in fact, because you really don't know how to deal with something like that? Correct. Okay. If I can have just a moment. <clears throat> We're going to get the transcripts, but I want to ask you if you recall um, th any discussions with Casey in reference to the abuse by her father. Yes. Okay. That's what clarify that more would be. Um, I do recall her bringing up being disciplined by her father, but I don't recall what actually happened. I just, from my knowledge, it seemed like discipline to me. But do you recall not, well, I'll need the transcript for this, but can you recall for certain that it wasn't because that it was sexual abuse versus physical abuse, or you just don't know for sure? I just don't know for sure. Definitely was not sexual abuse. The only time that would... Someone tells me that that's why I knew the lead thing, because okay. that's such a substantial thing to say. Was it a lengthy discussion or was it a short discussion? Definitely a short discussion. Okay. And you don't recall the details of it? No, sir. However, you do recall the word abuse coming up within this discussion. I do recall the word maybe hitting anything else no okay uh we're gonna judge we had his file outside of the okay. um, if we're getting it right now okay. while you're waiting on this file i have a couple of questions i would like to ask them sir uh when did miss anthony uh tell you approximately about lee anthony's abuse it would be around the time that i went to new york so either before or after between uh before june 30th right around that time or after july 5th of which year sir of 2008 with as much detail as you can recall what did she say lee anthony did to her he um tried to feel her up Did, he, did she say where he tried to fill her up? Um, uh, on her chest. Any place else besides on her chest? No, sir. Did she say what was her approximate age? I can't recall that. Wasn't that, uh, I can't recall, sorry. Did she mention whether that had been recent or mm -hmm. whether that had been in the past when she was a child of tender years? By tender years, I mean 12 and below. Uh, it was definitely in the past. It wasn't anything present. And I wouldn't. But she didn't attach an age to, as to how old she was. No. Can you recall anything else she said about it? No, sir. Now, you said, she said, he tried to fill her up. Did you inquire or did she say whether or not he was successful in filling her up? 
She said it didn't happen. It did not happen? Yes. So she said he made an attempt to fill her up. Yes, sir. Anything else that he tried to do? Not to my knowledge. All right, let's move on to Mr. George Anthony, her father. Would you relate to us what she said occurred in terms of abuse with Mr. Anthony as in much detail as you can recall? <sighs> hitting, that's all I can remember. Okay. When you say hitting. Hitting. Okay. What did you take that to mean, or did she give you a more specific description of hitting? I took it as discipline. But did she tell you, besides use the word hitting, did she say anything else? Not that my knowledge. Again, did she say when this occurred, Mr. George Anthony hitting her. As a child. As a child. Anything else she said that you can recall? No, sir. Okay, Mr. Bias. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Lazaro, do you remember we conducted a deposition over the phone? Sure. Okay. And do you recall me asking you this, the following question, page 30, line 13 through 17. So you don't know if it's physical? Yes. Turn on your, your microphone to record before you can't hear anything. This is willing. First deposition. Second deposition, sorry. Uh, so you don't know if it's physical or sexual you just don't recall. And your answer was, I just don't recall. It could have been. Honestly, it would have been much better to do this at that time. Do you recall giving that answer? Yes. And I, which Anthony are you referring to with that line of questioning, Mr. George Anthony or Mr. Lee Anthony? That was in reference to George Anthony, was it okay. not? Okay. Yes, page 30. <coughs> That was Mr. George Anthony? Yes. Okay, sir. thank you. Now, sir, were you referring to that your deposition took place in 2011, February of 2011, as opposed to you being asked these questions in 2008? I was referring to it would be easier if it was asked those questions probably closer to the time that I would know that. And that's why you simply just can't recall whether it was physical or sexual, only that you do remember as, as of now, no, hitting. Out of, all, of anything, any kind of abuse. That's why I was making that comment then. Okay. I have no further questions, Judge, or no further information to proffer. State in a cross-examination on the proffer. No, sir. May Mr. Lazario be excused from the state. For the night, yes, sir. Okay. Yes. For the night, Mr. Lazario. Thank you, Thank Honor. you, sir. Thank you. Okay, folks, anything else for the good of the order before we recess for the evening? On behalf of the state of Florida, on behalf of the defense, okay, we'll be in recess to 8.30 tomorrow morning. All right, state may proceed with their motion in limine. Morning, Your Honor. Uh, we filed a very brief written motion to prohibit counsel from eliciting statements of the defendant from witnesses without making a proffer to the court uh, ahead of time out of the presence of the jury uh, as to the admissibility of the information that would even be contained in the question. It has been um, our experience so far in this case that uh, counsel has been asking witnesses uh, things that the defendant may or may not have said 
to them, which is in clear violation of the evidence code, Florida Statute 98802. Uh, there are exceptions for certain hearsay statements. There are also exceptions that are available to the state, as the court knows, that are, or the party opponent that aren't available to the defendant. And for us to repeatedly, particularly once the question is out, object to this type of inquiry uh, when counsel's already been warned of the inadmissibility of that without a, an appropriate exception, uh, is detrimental, in our opinion, to our position in front of the jury. So we are asking, um, not necessarily to prohibit the question at this juncture, because there could be an appropriate exception to the hearsay rule, uh, but that counsel be directed or ordered to proffer uh, any time he wants to ask a question regarding one of the defendant's statements. Reply from the defense. Yes, sir. Our first position is that this is an untimely motion. Our second position is that this is a perfectly timed motion for the prosecution. And that is, this comes now subsequent to them in, uh, parading witnesses up here to talk about my clients uh, spending the night, sexual partners, innuendos, and, pos and showing the bruise uh, of, the, of uh, what was on Kaylee's eye after they've gotten all this irrelevant information in through the back door, much of which it was stricken, now they certainly want to try to preclude any questions that might hurt their prosecution. I understand it's a very smart and strategical move. However, uh, one, it's, it's untimely. Second, it limits any type of cross-examination uh, based on the defense. Now, certainly, there are topics that are sensitive in nature, topics that may come close to, to being objectionable. But coming close to being objectionable and actually being objectionable are two different things. And to limit our cross-examination of a witness clearly obstructs the truth-finding process. We may, there may be issues that can be touched upon and, and we all know what we're talking about, without it actually being against any of the rules of evidence in this case. Uh, they're very capable cr prosecutors. They don't need an advance notice of what a witness is going to testify to. And, they're, and the big fact here, too, is this isn't a scripted event. Many of these witnesses, we will not know certain things that they will testify to or what they may change once they take that stand. So I, I think to limit the uh, cross-examination and requiring proffers, thereby allowing state witnesses to uh, take the stand and, uh, or to give the prosecutors an advance preview of what the cross-examination is going to be, I think the defense is significantly prejudiced in that fact. Uh, couple that on with all of the other evidence that, that the state has, in, in our opinion, impermissibly been allowed to introduce. And I, I think we have a theory of defense, Judge. We need to have the right to explore it. And we need to be able to have these witnesses on the spot and ask them specific questions. If there is a objection to the question, the prosecutors are more than capable for, for objecting. And, and this certainly doesn't require us stopping proffering and giving them an advance notice of, of what is, is actually going to be asked of a particular witness. OK. Chapter 90 of the Florida Evidence Code uh, provides the framework for what evidence uh, is admissible. Even evidence uh, that the defense may or prosecution that may attempt to introduce evidence must meet the requirement of Chapter 90. This motion basically deals with uh, attempts uh, by the defense to elicit statements 
by uh, the defendant from other witnesses. Uh, those are under the evidence code self-serving when uh, attempted by the defense. There are basically three exceptions to that, which I will not go into, uh, that uh, may permit some of these. Under those three exceptions, there are foundation requirements that must, must be asked before those questions can be asked. As of yet, uh, there has been no attempt uh, to establish those foundational requirements, not saying that they are admissible under those three exceptions. Uh, therefore, uh, the state's motion in limine regarding statements uh, of uh, the defendant be proffered uh, will be granted. Anything else? Yes, I wasn't sure if the state had any other motions. Nope. We would at this time renew our, our, our motion for a mistrial based on the evidence that the state has presented, the impermissible evidence of remorse, uh, impermissible character evidence that has been uh, uh, numerously objected to on, on various levels. So far, the state has put on a case solely of dealing with a, the bad character of my client or the attempted uh, character assassination of her past conducts, boyfriends, people she slept with, uh, things that uh, have absolutely nothing to do with the crimes charged and has put us in a position where we are significantly prejudiced uh, as to some of the impermissible character evidence that they have been successful in introducing. And we would again renew our motion for a mistrial at this time. Mr. Baez, how many times have you asked on cross-examination of witnesses whether or not Ms. Anthony was a, quote, good mother, unquote? Many times, and okay. I don't think one has to, anything to do with the other. Now, this answer my question. You've asked many times. Yes, sir. Okay. That can be construed, Mr. Baez, as a... Uh, question dealing with character evidence, which the state has objected to, and I sustain the objection. Are you familiar with the case of Greenfield versus state? No, I am not. Okay. It's a case that basically established a proposition which prosecutors loosely call, have you heard, when someone attempts to introduce character evidence and for whatever reason, the state permits it, and they are permitted to elicit a line of questioning called, have you heard? And if you have heard all these things after they go through a litany, do you still have the opinion that this person is a whatever trait of character? Uh, so, uh, we haven't got to that stage because the question that you ask is not a pertinent character trait, which is admissible as character evidence. But the motion for mistrial uh, will be denied. Anything else, folks? Yes, sir. And state your name for the record, please. William Slavon, on behalf of the defendant, Ms. Marie Anthony. Uh, we wanted to bring to the court's attention a motion for additional hours of investigation that was heard back in March of uh, 2011 on the 23rd day. Okay. Uh, it is my understanding the court granted that motion. I granted, you asked for 200 hours, I granted 100 more. 
Your Honor, uh, I believe that was the most recent one. We're referring to the one back in March. Okay, in it March. Was, okay. It was argued by Attorney Michelle Medina from our office, and it was granted by yourself and entered on the court's docket. However, a signed order was never issued. Okay, do you have a proposed order? Yes, we do, Your Honor. Okay. As well as a few motions that I believe were filed okay. by in Pinellas County for motion for tra transcription services for Dr. Neil Haskell. I can't remember I signed one yesterday evening, but if you have a copy of it. Okay. And we also had a motion for transcription services for some uh, motion to suppress hearings and the Fry hearings. However, the court reporter only transcribed Jordan Cindy Anthony's testimony and failed to transcribe the other witnesses that testified at those hearings. Okay. May I see your proposed order, sir? Yes, sir. If you hand them to the clerk. We had a few other additional ones. Okay. Go ahead and finish. Okay. The uh, other one was, I believe, filed uh, yesterday, the day before, regarding a motion for transcription services for Clint Roy House that testified on the 25th. Uh, we may feel we need those uh, transcripts for impeachment purposes, as well as some other witnesses that were deposed uh, um, earlier this year. And uh, would you I approach? Yes, sir. Hand those to the uh, clerk. realized the uh, bottom uh, order is for a motion for additional hours for the penalty phase for Janine Barrett. Uh, we were requesting, I believe in the motion, for 100 additional hours. Okay, just a second. Uh, Okay, what is the purpose of the transcription, the emergency motion to preserve evidence, participate in forensic testing? Why do you need that transcript? I believe it was going to be used for impeachment purposes. Who testified? I think that was done in December of 08. Not, I wasn't involved in the case. Honor, I apologize. Okay. Can anybody recall who did somebody testify? I could research it further, and if we could address this at another time. Okay. Uh, motion to preserve forensic evidence. And there's a motion to suppress 911 call. I believe I did that one in motion to suppress statements. If the emergency motion to preserve and expect, inspect evidence participate in forensic testing contains witness testimony of witnesses who would testify that would be granted. Uh, I just asked the court report and service to review those and let me know. Yes, sir. Uh, but it's going to take some time because most of those court reporters are in this court. You don't have the depositions of Dr. Weiss and Danzinger transcribed? I do not believe so. Okay. Okay. We'll request a copy from the okay. court report. Can I do for the penalty phase, what did you say about that, sir? For additional investigative hours? Yes, sir. For 100 hours for Janine Barrett, the mitigation specialist. 
She hasn't completed her investigation yet. I believe there are some additional issues that have, have arisen. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'd be in recess to 9 a.m. Yes.